for now, I know we wanted to talk about fall makeup and trends and tips, right? And Sarah, I know you had done a little bit of research today to see what was hot and what was going down for fall, right? Because we are definitely headed into fall here soon. And I know that you and I both were on the same page as far as what colors to go with and what uh, what looks were hot right now. So did you want to talk about some of those... Um, some of those looks that were coming into style again here in the fall, like some of the makeup trends that you saw? Yeah, I can definitely talk about some of those. Um, Honestly, fall trends are kind of similar every year. You always kind of stick with the basic neutral colors, like bra- like dark browns, maroon colored eyeshadow or lip colors you usually would go with more with like a bold lip and a bold or like a bold eye statement and it'll be like dark and sultry more like you wouldn't have like bright pinks and stuff you would have like darker purples and plum colors and you would also have like orange but it would have to be like a burnt orange color it wouldn't be like super bright you could even do um, I think I saw that, like, a blue eyeshadow statement would be, like, is going into trend in fall of 2022. Something about blue is in trend. I don't know. I guess we're going back to the 90s, I would say. Well, I mean, it's been about that time for that to make a refresher, honestly. Um <clears throat> You know, fashion comes in phases of history and it always repeats itself with fashion and beauty. So it's something that we take from our past and we recreate looks from our past to kind of give us an essence of that vintage feel and bring that back into our current livelihoods. And every generation that comes up again after the next one starts bringing back historical fashion and beauty. So I love seeing what's happening with cosmetics right now um, with the sustainable packaging that we're getting. Um, And I know that's not really related to the fall trends and everything, but at the last time I went to the makeup store, I'm just saying the makeup store, right? Because I'm not going to say a specific makeup store anymore. The last time I went to the makeup store, I... uh, I noticed all the packaging that was for makeup specifically was really disposable, right? Like you can dispose of it now a lot easier and recycle those a lot easier than you could in the past. And I don't even know the brand of this lipstick that I got, but it's in a little cardboard tube and it's a personal pocket size lipstick that you could just toss in your purse. And I love it so much because of it. And they come in some really nice neutral colors, some deep fall colors as well. And, um, I, I need to find out what the brand was, but yeah, I think it's called caked or let me see if it's right. It's right here. Baked. I think it's called baked beauty. Um, beauty bakery beauty bakery cosmetics that's what it is and the one i have is called bastani ice and it's in a nice little pink tube that has cake pops on it is what it looks like and it's a nice nude color so i really love that lipstick it comes in a little toss away tube that is made out of it looks like cardboard and a plastic material and it's very beautiful so i think that they have a lot of nice little lipsticks that you can get. They're matte and they stay on really well. They don't even fade off after a few hours. Um, and I liked that about it because it's an actual lipstick. It's not like an, it's not a lipstick that you have to apply with an applicator. It's one, the push, the push up lipsticks. So those are really nice. So I really think those are great to have to toss in your purse. It's just something simple, um, for the fall. I know that a lot of people want to focus on skincare headed into fall too because the weather changes. So I know moisturizer is going to be a big thing. Primer, a moisturizing primer. We got Tanya back with the sounds. (laughs) Yay. Yay. At least it sounds like she's back. Tanya, are you with us?
I think she can only do sound effects. Okay, well, that helps, I think. Yeah, no, it's still being weird. (laughs) This episode is going to be interesting for sure. What do you think, Sarah? Yeah, it'll be quite interesting. <laughs> but I think we can it's figure okay. it out. Yeah. And if we'll Tanya just go has with the anything flow. that she wants to say, maybe we could like type it if and you, talk. Yeah. We can do <laughs> um, she's doing a bunch of sounds. A scripted section for Tanya's section. I feel so bad. There we go. Claps. Um, yeah, guys. I think that going into fall, you definitely want to have your moisturizing primers, your moisturizers, and your tinted moisturizer for your skin because that drier air that's going to come in is really going to kick your skin's ass as we get out of summer and into that drier air, right, as we get colder. So you want to keep your skin moisturized all the time. Go ahead. I also think I think that uh, they said that a minimum base would be optimal. Like you would prefer instead of doing like heavy face mount, face makeup, like all the foundation, the concealer, and all of that. You would do like you would go with a lighter base, but you would consider making a statement with your eye or your lip color. I think that's what they were really focusing on for the fall. That makes sense. Honestly, it really does. Uh, Focusing on those lips, you know. What what do you want? Is really in heavy eyeliner or light eyeliner? What are you thinking for fall? Graphic, graphic eyeliner. Where you make designs and stuff. So that's still in. Definitely the time to do it. Yeah, it's still in. Would you think that like some fall leaves on your eyes would be cool? Like yes, doing I've a few fall leaves on the outside. That would be I've really seen cool. people do those. I've seen people do like hearts. I've seen people do stars. I've seen people do like they've made I've seen so much like cool like Halloween inspired makeup. I love the fall time because people get really creative. Even if they don't do like special effects makeup, they do a really good idea or like a great a good job at like depicting Halloween with just face makeup okay I think I figured out what I did wrong can you hear me we can hear you now yeah. uh, I, I had my microphone shut off because I always shut it off <laughs> and I just I was so busy doing everything else I forgot about the microphone <laughs> but I know I know the soundboard works see yeah me. <laughs> ah Oh my god, that was too funny. But but you I'm know so what? You ladies are awesome because you guys just winged it. You kept going. I was like, thank goodness. Because I was like, I, I mean, it's not streaming on Facebook, but I'll stream it later on the other when they um when audio labs make it look pretty for us. So Okay, cool. Yeah, I wasn't sure what we were doing there for a second, but I figured it would be better for us to just go with it since we had some people in the room than to sit there and wait for you to come on. We didn't know when. So I think that we were able to definitely talk on a few topics so far, but I think that what Sarah just mentioned about Halloween makeup should be something we talk about tonight because I know it's far away still to the in the reality of the world, right? Like we still have what two and a half months until Halloween is technically here? Isn't, don't we have like Labor Day weekend coming up? I mean, we yes. should be talking about you know, like I know you guys are in the middle of the United States, but don't you go to the beach or go? I know no, barbecue. we have barbecues here for Labor Day if it's weather permitting, right? So yeah, that's pretty much what it, like Labor Day is the last day for the pool here. So and the kids are already in school. So as far as like makeup goes for labor day weekend i'd say you can still go summer because it's technically the last day of summer um and what's the rule right for fashion you're never supposed to wear white after labor day 
Is that the rule for fashion? Yeah, but, but I'm in, I'm in South Florida. We wear every we wear white year round. Yeah, isn't there specifically we white parties? Aren't there white parties where people just dress in yeah. white and yeah? So I, I throw I threw a white like, white um, one of my birthdays. I had a white party. We all dressed up, all dressed in white, and drank a lot and had a lot of fun. Part is like you know you spend all your time looking really hot for a party and then it's, you only look good for like an hour. <laughs> right, right. Yeah. And after you start drinking, you're off. like, who cares if my lashes are all over the place? That's generally what happens, right? Like if I get all set up with makeup on, and these days that's rare for me to actually put a full face of makeup on. But if I do a full face of full face of makeup and it's hot outside and I'm going out to an outdoor bar, I generally feel like my makeup is melting off my face within a few minutes. So I'm looking forward to fall for the cooler weather because I will wear more makeup. Honestly, I will wear it more frequently, especially if I'm going to be going out um, to meet new people and try to put an impression out there. So for me, I don't personally like those maroons on my skin. So I go for more of the deep dark browns um, and then the rich chocolate browns with a little bit of a shimmer to it. Uh, I love doing looks with those colors. Um, the dark smoky eye, but with dark browns is always something that I really love to do. Um, Makeup Forever has a really I good love eyeshadow. Browns. Like absolutely love browns. They really look good on uh, people like ourselves with dark hair and that Italian skin, <laughs> you know, the dark browns are really great for most people with dark hair. I don't know why other than it just really enhances that. Um, Did I hear correctly that you guys said that um, the, the nineties look oh, back in? That's what Sarah was saying. When Am I in style? Research. Probably. Yes, because like a, the blue, like blue eyeshadow is supposed to be in. Blue eyeshadow is definitely iconic 90s because of just what happened with it then. But I think that now we've got so many different ways to accentuate with makeup and the color blue that it's totally different now and we can we can what are we calling the 2020s you know what i mean like what are these the new 20s you know what i mean like we've got to come up with our own styles for this decade of time you know that's what i'm thinking is like that's why everybody is so uh, proactive about coming up with these designs on their faces or the trending eyebrow fashion. Do we have new eyebrow trends yet for this time of year? Because I remember the last time I was looking at eyebrow trends, it was squiggly eyebrows. And I don't know why that was a thing. I have no clue about this. Yeah, no. And then people were like cutting into like their eyebrows or like half their eyebrows off. Or they would, like, yeah. make, like, designs in their eyebrows. I thought that was kind of odd. But, but hey, to each their own. I've yes, watched people, like, everybody has their own style. all different kinds of stuff on. And, like, freckles, like, faux freckles are really in. I have a lot of natural freckles, personally. So I, I tend to cover my freckles up a little bit. And I, I know that's weird right now because a lot of people are really into the freckles but for me they cover my whole face and it's just so many so I'm like oh my gosh I need to like even the skin out a little bit with some foundation and I really like think about though if you decide to put fake freckles on your face I mean when you sweat it goes everywhere I used to have a I, okay I have a beauty mark but my mom my sister it all you know it fell on their face mine fell on my stomach so I would put a fake one so that it looked like part of my family <laughs> And the funny thing is, it doesn't look pretty when you when you have a you know after an hour drinking and you start, your face your makeup starts melting. It doesn't look pretty. So I don't I don't really believe in things that you have to alter yourself to look like, because realistically, you know, the weather it sucks for make fully makeup unless you're going from your car to a, you know like you're not going to be exposed to air because <laughs> things melt. Yes, just like when I had to draw my eyebrows on for a while, 
and it was so hot and I would forget that they were there and wipe my forehead and then I'd have eyeliner just dragged across my forehead. So hot, so sexy. Had to go redo the whole thing. And that was a bad phase, man. That was a bad phase. I'm looking at a picture on my fridge right now of those drawn on eyebrows. Super thin, just a black well, line my, across my eyes. is in. People are like microblading so they don't have to worry about doing anything. It's like tattooing your eyebrows, but... Yeah, I've wanted to get the microblading done, honestly, because I think it would make my eyebrows look a little bit better than they do naturally. Essentially, it's just a tattoo for your eyebrows. Mm Mm-hmm. But yeah, it makes it look more, like, defined, I guess, on a regular basis. Which is why I was liking it. Brow laminations, like, you can do those. And they're supposed to make your eyebrows look more fuller. So Brent has shared, um, there it is. Did you put it up, Brent? Did you put the, um, the one you put up to the buzzle? Awesome. Yeah. Thank you, Brent. Take a look at that, um, article. 11 fall, 11 fall 2022 makeup trends you can start wearing now. I'm not sure I can get away with a, um, reddish orange eyeshadow and with a hint of, I think it's pink. Um, when I worked for the Francois Nars, we had something called um, Himalaya, which is white with, iridesc- with like a one side is like uh, like a shimmery iridescent like pink, and so then they had one with that's called Rio, which is like a red. So, but this one looks kind of really cool. It's red mixed with orange in it. So, and I I I really love orange lipstick, but I feel like it. You got to you have to wear it with a tan for some reason. But it's really, and, the, no- and the other article that I shared is uh, some article to do with the, the something to do with dermatology. Sh- uh, uh, dermatologists shared the worst uh, beauty hacks that they had to deal with for skin. Nice. Let's take a look at that one. So let's let's do the first one, which is the buzzle story. I'd like to know the no commitment bleach brows. Is that the one we were talking about? You know, they did that in the 90s. And here's the thing. Your eyebrows don't really grow back as much as you want. I used to have thick eyebrows. And once they fall out, they don't come back. So I don't know. Bleaching your eyebrows is not, I don't know how healthy that would be in the long run. Because they're thin out your eyebrows. So the no commitment bleach brows. Okay, Sarah, would you be, you know, wearing this? Bleached eyebrows? Is that what yep. you said? Yep, bleached I'm eyebrows. Good. No, I'm good. Yeah, I like bleached. my eyebrows. I mean, like here, when that. I used <laughs> when my clients used to want like light eyebrows and they have dark brow, I would usually take a, a like a um in NARS, there's something called to go, which is like a mustard blonde color. I would do that, but I don't think I would go and put some chemical on to light my eyebrows. No, I'm good. No, thank you. They naturally will lighten over time with the sun, too. Out of all of those looks, I really liked the foil effect um, on the bustle article. I think that that is something I would go with with that gold foil um, eyeshadow and a nice uh, nice lip to go with it. But I also like the clean girl look. That's what I generally go for now is just minimal makeup with a little bit of uh, accentuation around the eyebrow, the eye, and then uh, skin care. Sorry, guys. I think... My edible kicked in just about now because I'm losing so less words that I <laughs> want to like, say. I'm like so oh jealous. Okay. Oh, you I took look at number right five before the eyebrows. space. The number oh, five I was looking eyebrows. at Doja Cat's eyebrows in that article too. Did you see her eyebrows? Yeah. Is she going through some tough times? Because I oh, don't know. Some, I haven't watched. She cut her all her much. hair off. Yeah, that could be that could be a statement, that could be a desire, that could be just, you know, fashion statement, or it could be a, hey, I'm going through some shit, I have the desire to shave my head right now to make a statement to someone in particular, right? Like, one of my friends, when they got, uh, let's just say, ghosted. 
from a dude last year. They shaved their head in a statement of, oh, you said you really liked my long hair. Well, fuck you. It's gone now. Excuse my language, guys. But they shaved their head in a statement of this is why I'm shaving my head for me so that I don't have to deal with anybody saying that I only like you for your long hair ever again. And now they have short, beautiful, curly hair that has grown back in since they shaved it last year. They look gorgeous and they are really happy with the way their hair has turned out now. So I'm thinking that for Doja, I haven't paid too much attention as to what's going on with her specifically. Um, I know she gets a little wild sometimes on TikTok and on social media and just in general, she's a wild girl, but that's always a fun thing usually for most people. Let's just put it that way. Uh, but if she is going through something, I haven't heard. So I think that that could be a style decision um, for her, perhaps. I would hope a style decision because it looks like she's got that shaved head a la Amber Rose, the way she's got her eyebrows done with the little hearts and the lines. I think it's really cute for her. So it, I hope it's a style choice as to why she did that. And not that she's going through something dramatic. Because that would suck for her. I just think about Britney Spears. Yeah. And with Britney, I it's think Britney way. Spears, man, like that had to do with the fact that she was, I think, pulling her hair out at the time. And she wanted to stop doing it. And for me, that's something I relate to is that I shave my head to avoid pulling my hair out. Because I have that disorder, trichotillomania, where you pull your hair out. So I wear wigs on a daily basis and support anybody that chooses the wig life. I think it's a fun life to live with your hair. And um, yeah, but I think that when you shave your head, there's always a reason for it, right? Whether you just want to have easier care for your hair or you want to make a statement with fashion or you think that, you know, you might be going through something and you might feel better if you shave your head, right? Like that's something some people do to feel release or to feel refreshed. You know, they, they sometimes feel like that would make them feel better and like a whole new person. So I think for at least some women shaving their head could be a, a freedom sort of thing. I mean, I like usually cut my bangs. I, my thing was my bangs. I used to sometime, you know, I got carried away with it. <laughs> but I cut my bangs <laughs> all the time. That's it. Everything else, I don't. I just don't mess with it. I just shaved my head last week, so right now I have a shaved head, and I haven't taken any pictures of it yet. But I guess I could do it and see how it looks. So. I'll be here. Y'all talk. No, I have a, I have a new client that um, I'm building her website for wigs. It's called, it's, I forgot what the name she wants to call it, but it's, it's wigs and bundles. So right now I'm looking at um, companies with hair products and we've, we, we might found a designer. So, so I might be sending some hair your way, girl. Let me, let me see what, what I can do, but I'm, with, I'm building her, all her whole brand out, but it's, you know, like really interesting. Some of the hair pieces. That is, that they're making these days is so different compared to how like what I was used to. But nowadays it's kind of in. And you know the craziest thing is the '90s is back because you know have you seen that that thing where you have that poof your hair they pull your hair up and it's like, kind of like a poof in the front. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, like to the Jersey Shore. Like <laughs> yeah, I I used to rock that. I gotta find it. I'm gonna find my picture so I can send it. I'm gonna text it. I'm gonna uh, tweet it out. I gotta rock. I used to rock that pic. According I mean, was, to L. The in the fall slash winter time, we're going back to the sixties, the eighties, and the nineties for all of like. I'm so in! I'm so excited! I'm so in! So excited! So, Brent has a friend that works for L'Oreal. I don't know if he wanted to share something with us about skincare, but the Alert.com one he found for uh, for me was really cool. You know, they I can't hear anymore. You cut out.
okay, I went away and something happened, but yeah, I posted my shaved head on Twitter, guys, for the first time that I could recall. So feel free to go to my profile because I'm not going to pin it to the top of the room. But if you want to take a look at my shaved head, for the most part, it is there. I think it looks okay. But yeah, I generally um, shave my head to keep myself from pulling my hair out. Because otherwise, I will pull it out if it's long enough. And it's just like scratching an itch, guys. Like, that's the best way to explain that disorder is that it is just like scratching an itch. You feel the urge to scratch. You put your hand up. You scratch it. So I just hope that that helps explain trichotillomania to those people that have never heard of it before or who have heard of it and might relate to it in that way. But, um, yeah, it looks like we lost Tanya again, unfortunately. We have Brent and Sarah up here still. And yeah, we're here. I'm here. We've got a lot of listeners today, which is nice. Um, nice to see everybody. I see Stephanie down there. It looks like we've got uh, Crypto God Louie. We've got Adam N. And we've got Barbecue Beef Balboa, which we always love having them in the room as well. So, hi, guys. We just If you guys want to come up and ask any questions about, you know, beauty spaces, trends or anything feel free to raise your hand and we will let you guys up because we're about towards the last 20 minutes of the show but i mean what were we just talking about guys sarah what were we talking about other than the shaved head thing and britney spears and doja yes fall Fall trends trends. okay what were your nail trends sarah oh yeah okay so apparently i think it's bella haddad or Hadid, or whatever her name is, or GD Hadid, I don't remember, but uh, they have this trend right now for the fall called, like, the donut nail, and it's, like, a, like, opaque, sparkly white color. It's very light color, and then you would put, like, a shimmery top coat on top, so it would look, like, kind of, like, a glazed donut. That sounds like what I have on my toes right now, actually. I have a white pink... I, it is definitely a white pink, okay? So not baby pink. It's a white with pink under the yeah. like a pink tone. And then I have a sparkle uh, overcoat on top That's of it. That's pretty much what it is. Yeah, and it looks kind of like a sparkly glazed donut almost. Like, I love it. And it's making me think of this specific person's artwork. So I kind of want to go find it real quick and see if we can pin their artwork up to the top just in case because it I think this would be inspiring to anybody to get nails done based off of this artwork so let me go find it I'll keep it on mic so we could keep talking other the other trends for nails for fall and winter time for that time is like a statement gold design an accent like a gold accent which you know is normal and then like people are into like doing negative space designs which is where you would have like you would paint like certain areas but you would leave like a space in between different colors it would just be blank or just your natural nail I've had some done like that before a long time ago it's been years honestly since I had the negative space nails done but those are really cool Especially if they do, like, a black uh, design with, um, like, let's say triangles or wedges on your nail. Yeah, that would be cool. That yeah. would look really cool. Yeah, that looks really cool. Um, well, I did then, like, share the cat world. machine art up there, guys. So if anybody wants to check out uh, the Cupcake NFTs or the donut art, she has physical sculptures available on her website of cupcakes and donuts that are glittery and covered in crystals and it's gorgeous so i don't know if anybody's interested in anything like that but it's really nice collectible art and nft art to go with it so i think that's really cool and i know it's not makeup related but it seems like we do have some people interested in the crypto space in here as well um but also it could be inspiring for makeup looks um with the purples and blues and the colors that she uses i think go into those other darker 
violets and indigos that we could see for going into fall. Um, I'm kind of hopeful we see some new palettes, guys. Like, I I don't know about anybody else, but I'm really hoping we see some new eyeshadow palettes that have some really cool blues, purples, indigos, uh, you know, just those darker purple violet colors, right? I love that type of color for myself. I know a lot of other people do. I think that moving into the fall, having a lot of shimmer is a little bit excessive, but if you're going to do a foil look, you definitely want to have some glitter or shimmer um, to go with that. But as far as like just staying on trend for fall, gold seems to be good. Coral. No, I'm here. Can you hear me? I can hear you now, Tanya. We can hear you. We can hear you. Oh, no, I can hear you guys too. It's just where I was sounding great because I'm listening to the live stream. But then all of a sudden it just muted and then it like it stopped working. And I, my, my microphone was open. So don't know. It's going in and out. So I don't know. And I'm sitting right next to my, um, my, you know, internet box thing. <laughs> yeah. It's oh been God. strange tonight. I don't know what's happening with the connection on your end, but it, it keeps going in and out. And then it's like, you're here, you're not here, and I'm like, oh my gosh. But yeah. It's good. You guys right are now. doing great. You guys are doing great. See what what I like during the fall is I collect the special like the the like the palette that they only make for that year. So I usually get something from Christian Dior. I mean Lancome does one really nice. And then and then also they have gift with purchase or purchase with purchase. Do you guys collect yeah. those? I used to, but I haven't been able to recently. My mom did all that like when she was still alive. We'd go get the Lancome uh, gift with purchases every single time. And she would buy makeup for herself, makeup for me. And I mean, I miss my mom for a lot of reasons. But I do have to say shopping with her was always fun. Like, we would just go shopping and eat lunch and just go out and uh, have a nice day together, right? And we'd go to the Jeff, like, to the mall that was an outdoor mall. They have restaurants there. And we'd go around and just go shopping for makeup or clothes and it was fun to do and you know we haven't done that now because she's gone but I I still like to do those things with my friends and Sarah and I like to go out sometimes and do those things together now so I, I think that's fun to have other people to go out with now but um definitely miss her for being able to go get the gifts with purchase <laughs> every single time man I had so many collections of little tiny eyeshadow palettes from Lancome that were from my mother that I found in some of her bags and I kept and I just found uh man it's been a few months now since I found this but I found one of her purses in a bedroom it was it had to have been the last purse she used because it still had her calendar in it for that month filled out and it had a lipstick from Lancome in there that was brand new that she had never even opened and you know that was from 2014 so, you know, that's a while ago, but I kept the lipstick just to keep it. I'm not going to use it. It's probably expired now, but it's definitely nice to have a memento of her. Um, and then you should blog about that and, and or at least do like something like that. On, do a tweet about it and tag Lancome with it, because that's the kind of story that, you know, that's timeless it is. I mean, I even bought the C'est La Vie bottle of the newer uh, release bottle that they just released of their fragrance like a few months ago. And I still have it now. Like it's still two thirds of the way full because I don't use it every day, but it's my mom's perfume, right? Like that was what I think she was using. At least the smell is so nostalgic to me. It reminds me of her and they might have redone it a little bit as far as the fragrance goes now, but I just love having that nostalgia of being able to smell my mom still and like smell like her and feel like she gave me a big hug and that her scent is just like lingering around me. So for me, like that's what I really like about fragrance is that you can bring back a sense of nostalgia with fragrance and, um, you know, the, the profiles that come into those I want to say terpenes. <laughs> I mean, like um, my my signature fragrance was um, 
Angel from uh, Terry Mugler. I wore that since the day they launched in the nineties. I, I wore that. That's my, like like I always wear that. But then you know for evening sometime and especially during the winter because your your chemistry changes. So I use um, Panther by Cartier. So those are my two favorite. And my kid knows. He knows. Like it's so funny. Even when he was a little kid, he, I used to sneak gifts to him, and I would not tell him it was from me, especially like. You know, we're Buddhists, so for Easter, I always deliver, like, an Easter basket, but not say it's for me because we're Buddhists. <laughs> but he would know it was me because I would, you know, because I could smell, I could smell Angel Mom. I know that you dropped off that basket for me. And I was like, you're not supposed to tell anyone because <laughs> we're Buddhists. But um, but it was uh, things like that. I'm so glad you shared that because that's really important. Sarah, do you have a fragrance that, that smells and reminds you of your mom? Not really, because my mom's skin is so sensitive, but, like, I have one that reminds me of, like, my grandpa, and it's not really, like, an expensive fragrance. I, You know, like, the cheap dollar, the old, like, cotton candy and cucumber melon scented, like, perfumes, body sprays, mm -hmm. or whatever. My grandpa used to give those to me as, like, a gift set every year for our Christmas and he's no longer here so like every time that I see that stuff I always have to like go smell it or spray it just to be able to like get a, a sense of nostalgia being like at his house as a kid and having that gifted to me as a kid Aww. see you guys should blog about that I, I should write something about my um, the, I used to get Gina Tay when I was a little kid from my adopted grandparents, that was Gina Tay's bath splash. Mm. I don't, I don't know if they still make it, but that was my thing. I used to love that. But my, my mom, um, my mom didn't care for it. Cause her thing was, um, rose fragrance. So like anytime I smell like a rose or flat, like any fragrance has rose in it. I think of my mom, because like, that's what she wears. So, but see, that's what I love about, um, perfume and smell and, like different looks and stuff. Like I can look at a red lipstick and think of a time, you know, cause I used to talk a lot about red lipstick, you know, like we talk about fall makeup, fall red is in like, you know, and then not yeah, all reds are created reds equal, you know? And like maroons and like dark plum colors are definitely in. Yeah. Like when I worked for NARS that we had a lipstick called um, red lizard and that was, and then Trans-Siberian, so it's just a little bit more red-brown, but Red Lizard was more like a blue-red. And I would tell the story, because I had to, I had to go do a training about um, at different Saks Fifth Avenues. So I had to do like a luncheon, and we talk about do the new look, the new colors and stuff. And I would talk about the World War II, um, how the women couldn't afford to spend money. They were at war, and they're like, you know, but they'd save every single dime, every single penny that they could get their hand on saved just so they can buy that one tube of lipstick and it was always red so that they can show that pa patriotism and back then you know no matter how much the lipstick was they saw value in that tube of lipstick because that was their luxury so recently i just you know i did a uh, i always talk about this story because people the last thing they'll do even we're in recession right now have you heard about the, uh, the lipstick index it was coined by the son of Estee Lauder. He coined it. And the lipstick ind index, when you go into recession, the, the lipstick sales would go up because more people buy lipstick. And so during the COVID time, we were into fragrance. More fragrance were purchased. And now since we're not wearing masks, not, not you know, a lot of the mandates have been lifted, they're expecting a lot of like a big lipstick, lipstick sales. So when we, when, when we do our next um, show... I'm going to pull some data about the lipsticks because how much people are spending and what they're looking at and stuff. Because it's interesting how they predict that. And, and if you look at it in history, like I say, like my story, women will spend every single penny and save every dime, everything they can. While, but they have to make sure, you know, back in World War II, World War One, the women were the one that like, you know, had to take care of the family and try to find a job while the men went to war. So they were always wore red lipstick. Anytime there's a war, there's for some reason, red lipstick was um, the, the fashion. And also maybe because I think maybe because there's a recession, that's when people would, you know, they would spend their money on lipstick. I mean, w if you didn't have no money and you were able to buy something, what would you buy lipstick? Kara? 
if I had no money and I was able to buy something, I would probably still buy coffee first. Um, but after that, I would definitely go to the makeup store and buy myself something from the makeup store. Uh, the last time I went, I bought watermelon body butter. And it has been a luxury to have because it smells so good. It makes me feel so fresh and so beautiful after I put it on, right? So, like, for me, this $11 tub of body butter when I didn't have any money to spend was a real luxury. And I just, I love smelling good, right? Like, I love smelling good because people just associate fat people as disgusting. And, like, I love to smell good. I love to feel like I am fresh. And when I take my shower... I have a pineapple scented body wash and then I have this watermelon scented body butter to go on after it. And I smell like watermelon pineapple candy. So I'm like, you know what? This is amazing. I smell great. Everybody's going to want to sniff me. Like I'm going to be this most beautiful woman in the world because I smell like this. Right. So like for me, smells are so important and you don't need makeup necessarily if you smell good. So I personally just like to have a fresh wig or fresh face and then a nice body butter or a nice body wash to really just make my scent stand out. And then I will sometimes wear my perfume if I'm trying to feel really expensive. <laughs> I don't know why I use that term, but I like using my expensive perfume to feel richer than I am or to help me manifest something important, right? So I just really enjoy the rich smell of that perfume on myself because it makes me feel more of just I don't know it's just it's a classy scent I, I shouldn't use the term expensive it's a classy scent but it's a very expensive bottle of perfume so I guess maybe that's why I'm using the term expensive who knows I'm bougie bougie is good right we can use the term bougie in this sense uh, I used to be bougie before the before the pandemic now I'm just practical <laughs> I mean, I, I literally am the most basic bitch ever, guys. Like, I straight up live in black leggings and crop tops from, like, Target, okay? This is, this is not going out with designer shoes except for my Skechers that are neon green and my coach bag that I got on discount, okay? So I might look a little but, bougie. Again, though, we, we, we all have changed because of the pandemic. I mean, think about that. We, we all have changed. We're we not, have, like, man. Everything is going up in price. I was at the store today, guys, and this is just for, you know, just for reference. We we live in Indiana here, Sarah and I do. And at the grocery store, you can get a bag of Fritos chips for $5 a bag, or you can buy four bags for $8. So this is why we're fat, guys. This is why my state is one of the fattest states, is because it's cheaper to buy four bags of chips than it is to buy one bag of chips. So we have four bags of hey, chips. Now. I would have bought four bags of chips over the one bag of chips for that price. Most definitely. I did. I bought four bags of chips plus an extra bag of chips because you could still get the discounted price on it if you bought more than four. So there was four bags of chips plus one and I lost a bag somewhere on the way home. So we now still have only four bags of chips. But hey, that's more bags of chips than I needed and still save some money. But the price of makeup is going up too. At least it seems like it is. Um, however, I know there's still some discounted brands that are like still high quality as well. Like ColourPop is great for that discounted brand that you still get a high quality product. And the color selection with them is great as well. Sarah, do you use ColourPop? Yeah, I definitely use ColourPop. I love that. I love that it uh, ships usually all over, and I like that it's also affordable, but it's not, like, super cheap feeling. I like that it's, um, they also have, like, deals, and they always are coming out with new stuff. Yeah, I, I used to do all that stuff. I don't do any of those stuff anymore. I think, I think, um... Maybe I, I might be good for mental health if I start putting my, my makeup on. But I, I just feel like I'm always in a hurry, so I never do much with it. And then I when I and I have tons of makeup. But I feel like um I think and also it depends what stage of your life is you're in, you know. Because you have to realize I've like I wore makeup 
every single day for a long time and th- because that was my business. And then now I just, you know, I just, as long as I have, I have sun protection and I have a hat and, and a mask when I go out, <laughs> I still can't get, I can't lose my mask these days. I'm still like, are, are you guys still wearing masks where you're from? Where you at in Indiana? Because a lot of people down it's here in South Florida, we don't wear masks. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's not required here, but it's recommended. I wear one when I go to the doctor's. Because there's sick people there more often than there are in other places. Um, I hate to say it, but in public, people have taken to wearing a mask when they're sick, but not wearing a mask when they're not sick. And then in the doctor's office, you're required to wear a mask. So we still wear masks at the doctor's offices. Um, or the hospitals, but in the grocery store, most of the time, most people are not wearing a mask. Um, at the gas station, sometimes the gas station attendants would be wearing a mask. But I think now that COVID is picking up again out here, people might be more apt to wear them. So it's just, I think it's a personal choice now for most people on what they want to do, but there's not requirements here anymore. But I wear masks because I don't feel like wearing makeup or, or anything, sunscreen. And so I figured I'd wear a big hat, my, my funky eyeglasses on, and my mask. <laughs> that makes but, sense. I have a cute mask that lights up, actually. So mine has uh, pot leaves on it that light up and, you know, dance around. So it's pretty cool. I got it in Las Vegas. It's called like a cyber mask or something. And it has a really good... Uh, filter with ventilation so that you could breathe through it pretty easily as well. So I need to charge it. Otherwise it would, it would be cool to show it off, but no, it's a pretty cool mask. I keep it in my purse and it's, uh, you can take it apart and like clean it off and stuff too. So it's pretty helpful. Yeah. You should um, show me what yours look like. I have like a hundred of these masks that I bought right before the pandemic. <laughs> you, they, they, they're they supposed to like, so for my girlfriends and I for for birthdays and stuff so that this way we all would like put on, you know, we all, because you can program it and say happy birthday or, or you can say I'd like a drink or whatever. So you don't have to really take your mask off. So I have like a hundred of these. No, I probably, no, I gave it like probably 10 away, but I have these masks. I can ship you guys one each if you want. <laughs> you can like, you just program it. You can actually get your phone calls too because it, it's, it's Bluetooth to your phone. And then you can program whatever you want in it. And then it, with your phone, if you play music and it will like move it. I, I thought it was kind of cool. I, I ordered from China, like like 2020, April of 2020, that I never, you know, I was going to use it because I wanted to start doing like, um, like, you know, I rave, you know, <laughs> like like this virtual raving, but giving give people masks and stuff. But n- no one saw that coming, so. No one believed in it, but now I think that um, like raves and doing it virtually was became a thing. But yeah, I, bought, I have these masks. You guys, if you guys want one, I'll ship it to you. So under the bubble box, I just share another look. I feel like I'm having a flashback of my makeup day. Like like all the looks that's happening coming up is what I used to sell and what I used to put on people. Do what? Sorry, I spaced for a minute. I'm just saying the makeup for the fall of 2022, I feel like I'm having a flashback. I'm like literally having a flashback of what I used to sell. Like this is, these are the looks that I used to um, put on women for and then like sell makeup around it. Especially the goth lipstick, the dark purple goth lipstick. And people are into, like, black lipstick lately, and they're doing, like, glitter glosses, like, super glittery. And I guess it's, like... You know, you can make it yourself. You don't need to go to buy it from the store. All you have to do is get some Vaseline um, and then put some color, whatever color you want, your shadow that you like or whatever. You crush it all up. You take a a blow dryer. And then, and before, you know, you melt the Vaseline into it, but then you add in the glitter. And then you take the blow dryer because you mix it all together and take the blow dryer and blow over uh, the little container. You can use any container, really. And that's it. It's the same thing. I, I, I did a whole class on it once. It's really it's the easiest way to do it. And you can make any color you want and, and recycle your makeup, too. Like, you know, you have old eyeshadow that you don't like that are dark that you feel like you want to wear and stuff. So it's really a good time to make them all into lipsticks.
I think it's a big tub of Vaseline. It's like really cheap. I've seen a bunch of people do that and they do like a bunch of things with, they take like, they make like lip balms with them. Yeah, lip balms, eyeshadows, because um, I did, um, because you know when I did um with Francois Nars, we had this product called the Multiple, which was a stick, and back then um uh, when I when I was selling it was like thirty three dollars, I think it's forty five dollars a tube right now, but it's really just Vaseline. It had he has like one one was called Copacabana, Malibu, South Beach, so he just mixed them all together and made them to a tube. So. Um, from there, I just thought of like one day I just sat around and like got one of these. Um, I actually went and got you, you know those. Um, you go to the restaurant, they give you those little containers to put your, you know, your ketchups and stuff in. That's what I did. I I get those and then I cut. I take out um, Vaseline, then I mix the uh, eyeshadow whatever color I want because I because if I want to do a shimmer eyeshadow, I want like a wet look. I would mix eyeshadow and Vaseline together, and then I press it into the eye on top of the lid. I press it into it, and it looks so good. And it does. And then you can just some um like maybe a, like a white shadow over it or a sheer shadow, and it sets it, and it stays that way. But the the thing with it is that you can't do too much because it when it dries up, it wrinkles up. I don't know if you if you guys understood what I was just telling you. Yeah. No, no I, I do. do. I, I've I got used, it. I've used the Vaseline and glitter on someone to do a, sh a shoot before, and it was really, really difficult to get it off. Let's just put it that way. Um, we yeah, you need waterproof. Legs. Eyes. We, you gotta you gotta get special eyeshadow. I'm, I'm, I, you gotta use like like actually Vaseline itself again to remove it. Pretty much, I think that's what we ended up doing was using more Vaseline to get it off because it was really, really thick and just on there. But it worked out really well. The legs looked really good with the glitter applied all over the Vaseline. And then uh, I think they were glittery for a few days after that. But she really looked cool in the shoes. And it was a good foot shoot. So that was fun. You, you notice um, it's about 8.01. We're going to close down. But I want to also share one more tip. Um, you know the, um, the wet look of the hair is coming back in again? Like that really wet. You know what I'm talking yes. about the wet look. Like it's not gonna be me. <laughs> that well, is definitely amazing. I do that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you how to do that because I used to wear that. That was my thing in the '90s. <laughs> I like I said, I'm having like a flashback on my my in the I '90s. I already kind of do it. I I use like a really good holding gel and I make it as like stiff, like slick as I can, and it usually yeah, looks pretty wet. Well, what I do is like you, you can do you can, when you get out of the shower, because I didn't want it. I, I would slick my hair for work. I would never do it like for work. But when I went out, I wanted to have the, that really wet like ringlets. So instead of blow drying my hair and then trying to make it like that, I make my when I get out of the shower, I just put a, like a heavy amount of gel. And I and philosophy used to have this thing that was made out of um, silicone. And so I would just cover my whole hair with that it was something like really thick gel but it, so I blow dry with a diffuser so and I've scrunched my hair as I blow dry so what happens is the hair actually you you lock the water inside the hair so it makes it all wet looking but your hair but you blow dry your hair that way try it that way so so this way you actually have curls and your hair in the curls and the and the water and the gel really makes it really looks really nice it's, it's a really cool look, especially. I used to do that look also for runway. I really love it when, um, when especially for uh, like summertime, for bathing suit and stuff. But now it's, 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 a, it's a, I can't believe all this stuff is coming back in. I have uh, curls, like ringlet curls. So usually when I get out of the shower, I put a bunch of product in it. Like I have like three different products I have to put in my hair, and then I sleek it back to make it look good. So then it's usually pretty, it looks kind of wet usually all the time. Yeah, you can have to share that picture for us. So um, it is about 8.04, ladies. I, I, I really appreciate my friends for being here, Adam, um, Bryce, Louie. And um, it was interesting, especially trying to figure out. And, and you know, I, I, what I discovered about this space tonight is you can leave your own space, turn off your phone three or four times, come back. It'll work for a couple of minutes and then you're still 
<laughs> screw loose. But one thing good is that the space keeps going, even if you're not, even though you're in the space, but no one can hear you. That's good to know. That's good to know. Don't in the space. Just just shut off your phone real quick, and then you can come right back in. And then when you come back in, just go to your profile picture, tap that, and it'll say join space. Hit join join space, and it'll it'll say reconnect. And it's it lasts. I did it like four times already. <laughs> That's awesome. Now we know. That's good. That's definitely good to know. Yeah, um, Sarah, I'm going to ask you. Do you want to do another space with me, just a chill vibe space after this, or what are you feeling? I think I'm getting ready to wind down because I'm tired. <laughs> Okie dokie. I will talk to you later. Thanks well, if you for do want, I'll pop tonight. in to, to say hi. But um, everybody, thank you so much, everyone, for doing this. This is my, um, I love Beauty Spaces Bar because it's the creative talk, you know, and I'm not, like, I've been working all day and I'm like, this is, this is so much fun, um, even though I had some craziness. But it was nice to have this whole deja vu moment because I really feel like I did this before in my lifetime, but I probably did. But um, thanks, ladies, for sharing your input. And everybody have a great day. And and Kara, send me the link. I got to talk. Louie, you going to call me after this? So Louie and I are having a, a, a conference call. <laughs> but everybody have a great day. And thank you for all your support. Bye.